The Real Estate Revolution radio show is designed to educate Missoula homeowners and home buyers how to navigate the uncharted waters of the current Western Montana real estate market in an educational, often edgy, and high energy fashion with host Jason Baker. Jason will teach you all the secrets on how to win with real estate, from listing your property to purchasing investments. Jason has you covered. Be sure to check the home of the week, the good news, and current market updates each week. Jason is revolutionizing the real estate experience for over 100 clients a year. Welcome to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Jason, as always, happy Sunday to you, my friend. Happy Sunday, Casey. We Sunday, doing, fun man? Day. Sunday, 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 fun day. You'll pay for the whole seat, but you only need the edge of it. We're we're doing live shows again. It's not not recorded. <laughs> <laughs> no. eh, we're gonna let that guy live that one down, right? No. In, in, no, didn't get any get any phone calls. We're not going to. I <laughs> shot some ducks in my backyard the other day. Yeah, good for you, man. That was pretty good. Yeah, just yeah. Some. Uh, I got some my irrigation still. I got my. Uh, I got uh, left that uh, thing out because I'm like, row, row. <laughs> you know. At this point, you got to leave her running. Right. <laughs> <'Cause> yeah. <laughs> a little chilly. I, I had three. Yeah, I had three of my cams uh, freeze up. So that's going to be hundred and thirty five dollar mistake times three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my wife will like that one. But anyway, yeah. So <laughs> so these ones I just got to unless I get like a really warm day where I can, it won't quick freeze inside there. But anyway, yeah. But where I was letting it out into our hay field. You know, I was I was out there the other night, and I saw a bunch of them circling around. I said, I'm, I'm not going to sit out there in the morning time and play hooky from work for an hour, and did pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. It's yeah pretty, pretty remind awesome. Remind me to share with you my quacker crackers oh. recipe. Is it, this could be a new section of the show. Yeah, we'll just have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for watching football, the quacker crackers. Have you ever quacker done crackers. that with the jalapeno and the cream cheese? That's and what the, I'm talking about. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. Those and the bacon? Yep. Mm. There's there not go. much bacon doesn't improve. We'll have our own cooking show immediately following our real estate show. That's today. exactly right. I'll start <laughs> drooling all over the place. Well, th- uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, everybody. Happy Sunday. I uh, hope you are all at church. You know, they take attendance at church these days, Casey. You know what I mean? They're checking it off. It's a naughty or nice list. Did yep. you know that? Well, yep. getting toward mm-hmm. the season. You yeah, know. tis the season. Tis the season yeah. score having so points. It's not really like that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people think it still is. But anyway, that being said, um, I wanted to talk today, just kind of go over, and thank you for this, you know, for the for the audience and the feedback and you know where we have more listeners than we we ever thought we did and uh which was two and uh so (laughs) which is great and we're getting some good feedback but uh you know the data keeps coming we're going to keep bringing it so up you know where we operate is ravalli county mineral county lake county i mean we can go anywhere basically i-15 west it's just that you know that's we're just here and so someone's like hey jason we run over to our house and i have to run up to great falls you don't have to bring my boat and my gun yeah of course yeah of course give me a reason now we want to expand uh, over to uh, Helena, uh, Great Falls, mm-hmm. and also to Kalispell. So should any of the listeners kn- know any great agents up there that want to really blow up their business in a good way, mm-hmm. you know, um, I would really, appre- I'd, I would feel blessed to be able to speak with them um, and see if we, you know, there's not a partnership opportunity there in one of those towns, uh, because, you um, you know, Great Falls is expanding. They just uh, hired 10,000 uh, or, you know, job offers or, or trying to hire 10,000 more people for the refinery up there, mm-hmm. which is which is great, you know, because uh, gas is super cheap, you know, so they're not making any. Just kidding. So, <laughs> you know, real no, but they're but, you know, Great Falls is a real up and comer for, you know, some people who are looking to invest. Um, that's a great thing. You know, always are. We have such an overflow of business up into Lake in Flathead County um, that we really need to have a team up there sooner than later. Well, I know and, that folks in Kalispell can yeah. hear us right now on the south end of town. Really? They're standing on one leg and holding up some tinfoil. That, that's, a, well, you know, I'm t- there's a lot of people up in Kalispell that just naturally wear a tinfoil just, hat. <laughs> it's, only, it's only on the south end of town. Now. <laughs> that's right. Can. Yeah. And uh, it, it's one of those things. Are they still counting votes in some of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, I know. Right. Isn't that funny how, you know, seven and a half million people in Florida and they can, bam, tell you who won right away. But then you get these, uh, you know, these crazy commies in some of these, uh, uh, you know, some of these... Uh, even they're, they're supposedly red states, but they're really not. Mm-hmm. And they can't even count the votes. It takes them two weeks because, you know, they get to say, OK, well, how many do we need? 
Yeah, and well, then they yeah. throw them in. Well, not to mention all yeah. the naps. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and naps. all the naps. Yeah, everything. Naps. Yeah, they they only have twenty. They have twenty fingers and toes. You know, so that's all <laughs> that they can count at a time. But anyway, I digress. So Ravalli <laughs> County, <laughs> don't get me going. But listen, uh, Ravalli County has two hundred and thirty-three uh, active homes, and that's okay. the same as last week, give or take one. Um, but the days on market have gone up four, uh, which is uh, just crazy. So it was went it up ninety four. days before, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at eighty. Yeah, 80. eighty. Yeah, and then the, so so there's an average and there's a mean. So sometimes I say the average, sometimes I say the mean, but the mm-hmm. average was over 100. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the mean, basically you throw away the couple of the top, you know, the ones that have been on the market since, you know, Jesus was born, you know, and then you have the, you know, some of the ones that, you know, went under contract almost immediately. Um, but it's 84 days on market, mean days on market, okay, which is increasing. And six, But, it, you know, here's, the, here's the, the thing. That's for active listings. We're having 10 or 15 or 20 expired listings every single week now. Uh, down there and, and also in Missoula County as well. So a lot of those ones that have been on the market for 120 days, driving that days on market up, okay, mean days on market up, are expiring. So therefore, they're not in that average anymore. Mm-hmm. So naturally, this time of year, you know, more homes expire on 1031. Uh, you know, November 1st, our biggest, you know, expire day, as is January 1st, because they the contracts will expire on December 31st. And that's just a byproduct of some people think that a six months contract that starts in May would end, you know, they, they, a lot of people say, well, I'm waiting till summer to sell my home. And yeah. I, I really don't know why that is. It's when all the houses are on the market. And, you know, you Most make more money when there's last, you know, the most competition. But anyway, I digress there too. Um, Someday people will learn if you want to make more money, list from basically middle of September till end of the year, Mm -hmm. or really just mid-September until about April 15th. You start getting in May, you start getting in June, July, August, you're one of many Mm -hmm. versus one of a few. Now we have a natural four to five X uh, increase in inventory, a huge increase, a 10 X almost days on market in uh, uh, increase. And $60,000 uh, is the average price reduction, which remains the same down in Ravalli County. Now, there's been 113 price reductions of those 233 homes. 113? Yes. And the most, it's like, what, 10% we're uh, talking about? Well, it's a, the average that they're reducing uh, across the board. So it's, it would actually be more than 60, but if they're 60 is the average across 233. Yeah. But yeah, the average price reduction across all active listings, which they have to use all active listings, is 60,000. But it's really more than that because really only 113 of them have, yeah. have, have reduced, right? So that, I mean, th- there's a, there's, the reason why is so many of the people didn't have to sell, they just wanted to sell and try to make all this money. Well, now that the market's changed, it's just not, you know, there's there's isolated incidents of, you know, isolated brilliance, you know, where, where there's multiple offers, but it is definitely the exception where it used to be the rule. Yeah. And then in Missoula County, we've got 277 homes for sale, uh, 56 days on market, which is down a little, but we've had massive amounts of expireds. Again, that's bringing those days on market down, not because the market's heating up, simply because the 180 dayers, because typically a six month contract, uh, those are just going by the wayside, so they're no longer they're no longer dragging that down or mm-hmm. up. Yeah, fifty thousand price reduction has been pretty uh, par for the course. But there, remember, on all these price reductions, and one hundred and three have reduced in Missoula. So a little bit more stubborn seller in and around Missoula County, it appears. And the fact is, is that if the house still does not have an offer within two or three weeks, it is in every sense of the word still overpriced. Mm-hmm. Just because these are the average days on market doesn't mean wait till then to reduce the price. You know, you're going to have to, if you're not having three to five showings per week, and we've been saying this for two, three, four months now, you're overpriced. you know you're overpriced every right. sense of the word. Now, if you have a $3 million home and you're not having five people a week, well, that's normal. You know, that uh, five a week would not be normal for that price range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe one. You know, I, I got, came across a, um, a study or survey here mm-hmm. that I just wanted to share with you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of homeowners take pride in their properties, you know. Sure. But that doesn't mean they, they wouldn't you know, give it up tomorrow for their dream home. Right. You know, right. Uh, this new survey I found 94% of Americans say they're not currently living in their dream home, but everyone has a different idea of what that would look like. For right. example, it says, 28% of people say their dream home would be in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. 22% prefer a beachside home. Mm-hmm. 20% say their dream home is out in the country. 15% want to be in the heart of the city. Another 15% want to live in the mountains. Yes. Uh, and, and people are being realistic to some of their uh, their said dream homes, I guess, would be multi-million dollar mansions. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but a majority of the people in the survey say their dream home is going to cost $500,000 or less. Yes. Yeah. And the most popular exterior style is modern, followed by ranch, Victorian. Uh, farmhouse and cabin. Ooh, 
Uh, modern was also the most popular interior style, followed by minimalist, traditional, contemporary, and eclectic. What's eclectic? Is that just weird? Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most popular dream no, amenities. I'm not saying that I'm not weird. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. The most popular dream amenities in this survey is uh, a home with a view. Came mm-hmm. in number one. Big backyard was number two. Large family room, number three. Uh, front porch or balcony was number four. Privacy came in number five. Hobby room mm. was number six. And then uh, home theater came in last. Ooh. Hobby room, though, is that equivalent to a shop? Because I didn't see a big no, shop on there. Usually. A hobby room is a room. Okay, so every other home I walk into in the Bitterroot Valley has a quilting room. A quilting room. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm not room. laughing at people like, well, I'm just saying, like, that is That's like, the hobby room. like, I would never, like, you know, like, it's, I don't see that as much in Missoula, but down in the Bitterroot, I guess it's more of a thing, because yeah. when I walk in there, they're, they're doing that, which is great. And I usually get a gift, which I like very much as well. So we just see that <laughs> we, we need to work on, you know, the camouflage patterns, but, you know, there, but it's, it's, it's so, but, you know, here's the thing. So we were going over. So a couple of days ago, I woke up and I was kind of grumpy. Oh, Have you huh? ever been grumpy? Oh. Never. I, I know. Eyed. You're all. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Gosh, what's always, the matter with you? I'm always bright eyed. I know. Tail. That's right. You've never. Have you ever mm. yelled at your kid? Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, me either. <laughs> or my daughter. Uh, so uh, but it, I, I woke up grumpy and I go. You know, because I, you know, I was looking at my goals and I was like, oh gosh, you know, because we, when the days on market increase, like you're going along, our goal is 150 families, uh, 165 family serves. We're going to end up with about 125 family serves. So, you know, we're, you know, about 40, uh, 30 behind, well, you know, about 40 behind where we really Your wanted. Goal. Yeah, yeah. B- behind goal. And, and that, and that was a byproduct of we were selling, you know, t- uh, you know, 10 listings plus some buyers, whatever, every month. And then when the shift happened, which started happening this summer, mm-hmm. uh, it was one of those things, you know, really the shift started happening in May. Uh, you know, it basically our inventory started stacking up too. And, you know, not seemingly as much, but it's one of those things where they're selling, you know, we're still, you know, we're not, uh, you know, sitting there saying that we're, so, you know, we think we're great. We think our marketing plan, we spend $45,000 a month on running the business marketing and staffing and everything else. But, um, you know, compared to about $450 a month with the average agent. But the fact of the matter is, is that despite all of that, our days on markets are, are, are up as well. Not that much, but they're definitely up, mm-hmm. you know. So, so, so every day is kind of like Groundhog Day sometimes? Yeah, every day is a little bit like grass. So I was a little grumpy. So I said, well, <laughs> here's what we're going to do, right? And so this is just a life lesson, especially if people listen to the last week's show, right? Um, I said, you know, I, rather than go in and, you know, and I don't, I'm not like the whip kind of leader, right, you know, for my team. But I'm like, okay, what is it that I need right now? And so I put on this podcast when I was going into the office called The Gap in the Game. And the gist of that is, okay, uh, we're way ahead of last year. Mm-hmm. But we're way below this ideal that we set that wasn't really based on anything except a wish. Right. It's kind of like, I want to have a six pack. Yeah. Right? And I, <laughs> you know what happened. I'm saying? No, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's just like, you know, dad bought extraordinaire yeah. over here. Right. But the th- but uh, so I have this ideal because maybe I saw some like, you know, dancing with the stars and old boy had a six pack. I actually had a vision board once. This is really weird. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Should, to commercial break. <laughs> so, but I actually had a vision board on it. It was a picture of a, of a six pack and, and it was a guy. My, and I, I, we, we had the movers come cause we were moving from, from target range down to the farm in Florence. Yeah. And, uh, and the guy's like, uh, what's that all about? <laughs> and I go, dude, someday I'm going to have a six pack. Vision board. <laughs> That's my vision board. Was there, was there a Camaro? It wasn't, my, it wasn't my dating board board yeah you know that was funny it was super embarrassing but whatever did you have a picture of the bandit car next to it too? Uh, that yeah that's right board? yeah yeah no no <laughs> it, it wasn't no a bunch of multi-family homes uh, were on there next to the six-pack but anyway the, so the, that was an embarrassing bandit, moment the bandit car that was a that was a great that that with cannonball run man and all that and the bandit and all that that was those were the days man for movies but anyway uh, so i was like i like oh gosh so i came in i'm like hey let's do this so we have 109 uh, closed so far, and I think we have 13 or 14 pending transactions. We have about another two weeks to get something under contract and have it closed this year. And we are, I can't tell you how grateful, how amazing that is, that feat. Mm-hmm. And then also, um, like my, my agents, it just I want to talk a little bit about how good my agents are doing when we get back from this break. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's take a quick commercial yeah. break, and we'll be back with more Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker right after this. 
Grab your jacket, grab your hat and gloves. It's winter in Western Montana. Hey, it's Peter Christian for my friend Jason Baker and his Rise Realty team. You know, Jason and his team are the four-season real estate firm. Doesn't matter what season it is. Jason and his team are using their accelerated demand marketing program to make sure you get the best possible price for your home. But there's a special program that works also in any weather, and that is their concierge program. If your home needs a little bit of help, maybe some paint or some minor repairs, to get that home market ready, all you have to do is let Jason give you a hand. The concierge program will get your home in great shape and get you the best possible price. And then when the house sells, you simply pay that money back. It's very simple. So Google Jason at Jason Baker team and find out more. Because no matter the weather, live the home selling dream and call the Jason Baker team. Live the home selling dream. From listing your property to purchasing investments, Jason Baker has got you covered. Time for more of the Real Estate Revolution Show. Welcome back to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. And we were talking during the break, Jason, that uh, for you, it's all about the team. You know, it's a big team. It is. You know, people are like, what in the heck? What is a team? And, you know, it's a, a team comes about as a byproduct of you're too busy. And so your customer service starts to fail. Right. So Slips through the cracks. When, yeah, yeah. So when I started doing this almost, you know, th- this coming August, I, I, so I've been doing it for nine years because August is closer to a couple months ago than it is, you know, another yeah. 10 months from now. But anyway, I'm super smart, you know, as you can tell. <laughs> I can do math. I can do math, kind of. But it, it but I, so like, so I started out, right? So you're just one dude, right? And then, you know, I'm getting all, I'm getting these calls and I'm making outbound calls and I, I start working. And then, the, you know, our market, I actually have a, a finite marketing plan. It's different now, of course, but when I started nine years ago, it was this, you know, and that started working really well and got up to, in in our first year, it doesn't matter what our numbers were, but they were incredible. And it was just work ethic. I mean, I didn't, I don't know if I slept for the first year, but the fact of the matter is, is that we were super blessed. And, but, uh, you know, after about two or three months, I'm like, holy cow. Like, I'm, I can't talk to my sellers every day or every other day or once a week or whatever, you know. Like you wanted to. Right. Yeah. It, because I, I'm either trying to get new business, servicing the business I have, just I'm running, I'm putting up a sign, doing the ads, doing the flyers, doing, but, you know, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. So you start, you know, you're running around like a chick with your head cut, so you got to hire an admin. So now we have a team. Yep. You know, and my wife got her license again. And then we're, because we we're taking a massive amount of listings and selling a massive amount of listings. Of course, you're getting buyer calls in those listings, and so now I have to field the buyer calls, and now I have to go show buyers property. Yeah. Well, I, the last time I checked, you can't be in two places at once. So now you need to have a buyer's agent. So my you wife was up with that. You need to make some Jason Baker clones. Yeah, no, no the world can only handle <laughs> I've seen, one. <laughs> I've seen that movie, <laughs> Multiplicity. <laughs> yeah. No, my kid looks just like me. Thank gosh, she's way nicer. But anyways, <laughs> but the fact is, is that uh, it's one of those, It's it was just a byproduct of service was failing, mm-hmm. and so therefore we needed leverage. Very much like a pilot does not, uh, you know, like the guy, at De- the pilot, you're, when you go fly Delta or whatever, right? We have a Delta card, so we fly Delta. We like to fly free, so put all the business expenses on there. This is a tip. I don't know if I paid for a plane ticket in, I don't know, in seven or eight years. But anyways, I digress. The fact is, I uh, um, when that, that level of service fails, you have to add the leverage. But a pilot does not do the baggage do the ticket sales, do all, you know, uh, you know, load you onto the plane. His job is to get you to the destination that someone else has set, mm-hmm. right? So his job is to fly the plane or run the business or whatever, right? So that's what he's doing. And that's very similar to what a team leader is. And so my goal now is to have, is to help agents live, you know, have amazing lives. I mean, it, it, when you're first starting off in business, there's a certain level of I don't know, selfishness. In other words, you have to get to a certain level. And so you're hyper-focused on that level in order to have any validity. Okay, so for instance, if I sold no houses and I'm like, would you like to join my team, Casey? I've sold no freaking houses. My systems are horrible. But would you would you like to come on board and don't know risk, what's going on. risk your family's life? You know, yeah. you, you could be broke because I am. But, you know, would you like to join my team? You know, <laughs> it's like if you don't get up to 100 transactions, how are you ever going to help someone get up to 100 transactions? So my goal was improbably relationships failed. Um, probably I wasn't home. I probably didn't have as many dinners with my kids as I would have liked. But. Anyway, we got to a point where I could actually say our systems work up to a point. But then when you get to that point, then you have to improve your systems in order to scale past 100, right? So, um, but now our goal is to help people, agents, not have any overhead or stress 
start and learn and, and, and excel 10 times faster than they would if they were trying to do this on their own, mm. make 10 times more money in the meantime, but really the earning of the money is because you provided a really good service and you really helped somebody not work with the dippy doodle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I don't even dippy know if that's a world a word, but you know, we, we <laughs> I mean, can, let we'll, me look it up right yeah, now. Don't, in, uh, Cause it dictionary. could be bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Dippy doodle yeah. Means. I, like we, 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 when there's, f- when there's 14, you know, people looking at a transaction, the chances of something bad happening or you, when you can have that much collaboration, that more much, eyes on yes. it. Yes. Yeah. You know, yep. it's it's just so so we do it for the experience of our client. That's why we have the admin for admin that we have to handle all the back end. Because, look, a salesperson's very, really super good at paperwork. Right. Yeah. And if they're super good at paperwork, they're very, really a really good salesperson. <laughs> I, OK, it's like stay in your lane. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can sit there and do paperwork all day. You aren't selling anything. Yeah. You know, so. That's why we, we, we have that. It's because we're fully available to sell our listings or we're fully available to go show property because our admin are handling that all important details behind the scene mm-hmm. and doing a damn better job than we would. Mm-hmm. So Not in the I's and crossing the T's. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, holy cow. I mean, you you don't want me anywhere near paperwork. No. No. And I'm, I, I understand the, the flow of it, but um, I just don't know where it is in my desk. Yeah, no. you know what I mean. I understand also the importance. Your handwriting looks like hieroglyphics. My handwriting is uh, <laughs> worse like than a doctor's. Yeah, it hieroglyph. <laughs> I, I'm not. I, it, you know, it's so neat. It's messy. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, <laughs> but my agent. So we started this thing the other day when I was pissy. Mm-hmm. We started this thing. And we're going. You know what? We're going to go. We're going to say one thing we're grateful about of the 109 transactions that we've closed this year together as a team. And my team gets to put their name on the deal. They don't put my name on there. Mm-hmm. There, you know, a lot of teams are out there. Okay, and I'm not talking badly about anybody, but here's the deal. If someone works their butt off for a transaction Mm -hmm. and you're putting your name on it and you're saying you closed it when they did it all, I think that's called ego. Right. I think that's a big ego. All you do is step in and sign the paper. My gosh. Everybody else does the And and I get it. I get the leverage. I get the leverage part. I've I've always been leveraged. I've always used leverage. Mm -hmm. But my agents put their... I say, yes, our team has closed this many, but I didn't. Right. Right? There ain't no I in team. Correct. Jason. They put their name on the deal. Right. So, you know, it's funny when I go up in a listing presentation, sometimes the agent's like, well, Jason's only closed 60 transactions this year himself. Okay. Meanwhile, they have a team structure as well, but they put their name on all the deals, but their agents did the deals. Right. Make sense? So they lump that all in there. And the agents don't get any recognition except maybe an off-branded Facebook post. In my opinion, if that agent does that entire deal start to finish, give them the full credit for it. Mm-hmm. Because people in life want to be recognized. And and you should. Yeah. To me, that's just the right way to do that. And then also, you know, your clients are less confused. How come yeah, I've never seen true. this person yeah, before? This <laughs> yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, you know, so, so, I mean, they get it. It's so a Jason Baker. I mean, everything they see has that on there, mm-hmm. but they, that's their agent. Right. And that also helps with, with, you know, future business. So anyways, I'm so proud of my agents, Casey, we sat down and together collectively through a massive shift, even though we were not on our massive goal that we set, cause it was massive. I mean, usually a business will grow at 15 to 20% a real estate business. You set the bar pretty high. We do. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why we failed is because of me. It, it just is. It simply is not because of that. Yeah. Could they have done, you know, made five more contacts per day? Sure. But I, my goal was to hire mm-hmm. eight more people than I did. And it's nobody's fault. You never mine. got around to it. I, I did not. Yeah. And uh, for whatever excuse I want to give, I did not hire eight people. Yeah. And had I done that early enough in the year... We could have had that kinetic energy and we could have reached goal. So the fact of the matter is, though, we crushed last year and I'm going to focus on that progress versus the the gap of where I didn't get to. I'm going to give myself credit for what I did do, mm-hmm. not for what I didn't do. Right now, that doesn't mean I live in fantasy land and there's no accountability in anything I do. But the fact is, truly, it's my fault. But I'm going to be I'm so grateful that we went way above what we did last year by leaps and bounds. And how can you not be grateful for that unless you're a, what I say? Dippy doodle. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really, so I started to look at it that way when I was in a bad mood. 
because I was looking at the gap, what I what I didn't do versus the gain, what I did do. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it was on this podcast. I heard the call the gap in the game podcast. It's like you got to start. You, you really will do things more if you start feeling good about what you what you did, even what you accomplished. Right. Yeah. Look at only the gain and then you'll start to have more gains because you'll be happier. You know, a happy person works longer. A happier person works better. A happy person glows. And your clients like that, you know. So if you're grumpy, get into that gratitude and look at some wins that you've had. This wasn't even what we were going to talk about today. Oh, well. But this is I'm where never, we went. I'm never grumpy. I know you aren't. Nope. Yeah, you're just a, you just glow. I do, all you, the time. You do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's coffee. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I started drinking these energy drinks the other day, <laughs> and my wife goes, she comes over the other day, and she zaps the UPC code. Dad gets a 41 out of 100. I'm like, what about- For what? For like- Health. Oh, how, how unhealthy it is for you. I'm like, God, I'm glad she didn't see that Twinkie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I've, never, I've never eaten a Twinkie, but, but then, or not since I was probably like four. But uh, Twinkies in the pillowcase. I know. I, my big thing is, is like, I love Kit Kats. Oh, yeah. And I love Butterfingers. Do you have to hide them from the kids, though? Oh, no. Oh. See, because, oh, well, the Kit Kats I have to hide from Cassie. In fact, last night I ate two and a half of her Kit Kats. She comes over with a marker. Was it Halloween candy? With, yes. Yeah. She comes over with a marker. She puts a column. She put, she, she does, she wrote, she writes, dad took, <laughs> so I took one whole Kit Kat bar, three of the like, kind of like Halloween candy size yeah. where there's like two bars, but it's half of yeah. like, and then there's these single ones. Mm-hmm. She wrote it down. So I owe her two and a half Kit Kat bars. <laughs> she wrote it down. She, had, she, she ripped it in half. And she had wrote it twice. She ripped it in half. She gave me here's one. Yours, and gave her, here's dude, your she copy. She doesn't give her daddy nothing. Here's her, your copy. I could buy her Dairy Queen twice a week. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you know. She's going to cash in one of these she days. She was too, boy. I'm lost. Well, she, uh, so, because we have, a, I bought a, you know, full size bars for Halloween at our, our di- second house in Dillon. So, I'm going to, I'll, uh, we'll settle up with her here okay. in the well, next couple of days. Here's your bill, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. She was so funny. Man, she doesn't give her daddy any quarter. <laughs> Old Cassie, little rascal. Hey, we're getting near the end of the show. Yeah. And as always, uh, we usually have somewhat of a featured property. Have you got any new properties you put on that you want to talk about? You know, I like this week, we t- we talked about the one that we did on Sunnyside Cemetery Road. The other one that we put on was uh, 5535 Nickel, but we did uh, put that under contract virtually right away, which we were super blessed. Oh, nice. We do have an incredible property up on Raven Ridge. It's a five-acre parcel. Uh, he dropped the price down to 175 and uh, that is... Uh, uh, um, amazing views. Where is that at? Uh, so, if you, in in Stevensville, yeah, right. Um, and this one's been on the market for a minute. Okay. And it, but the septic is approved. The well is in nine gallons per minute up there. It's kind of as you're heading up towards like Reed Butte. So if you're you're headed up, so you go up. Uh, um, uh, why am I drawing? Up? You grow up uh, Ambrose. Oh, Ambrose. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it, you know where Illinois Bench is. Yep. And then, yeah. yeah. And then uh, you take a right on Sunnyside Cemetery, and that winds around. Take a right on Park, and that winds around to Evenson, and then Evenson will uh, bump into uh, to Raven Ridge. And that's a five acre parcel. Great views. There's a septic uh, there. Uh, 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 septic per, uh, septic's there. He's got even the drain pipe. I mean, he's about to punch. So it's the, all put in. There it is. Yeah, so, so the septic's not in, but the pipe is right there, and oh. it's it's approved. I mean, right. I mean, he was. I mean, basically, the thing sitting up there with the tongs in the ground and start digging it, and you know, he decided he was going to live down in the valley. But that's a really nice five acre parcel. Um, and then we've got. Um, you know, they, uh, on the bottom of our website, jasonbakerteam.com, has all of our active listings. Would you all just go to the website and go down there? And the other thing you should do when you're there, too, is if you want to track the value or equity in your home, start the process by clicking sell and then find my value. Now, you're going to get some robot tells you what your house is worth. And so this is in two parts. That lets me know. And don't worry. I don't sell your information to the CIA. Right. Put your stuff yeah. in there. <laughs> and then I'll call you, me personally, not somebody else. Yeah. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll go over with you on Zoom or otherwise, your home's value so you can start tracking your equity on a monthly basis. It's free. Yeah. Don't cost nothing. No. Free 95. You have to put up with me for a few minutes. You got to talk to Jason. Yeah. Oh. Poor things. But, <laughs> you know, but it's just one of those things I want to do for the general public and spend some time. Plus, I like to meet cool people. And I don't bite. Yeah. And you say that the the tracker just kind of gives you a ballpark. It, okay, here's the thing. It yeah. just goes in and gets a stupid tax assessed value and smooshes them all together Got from it. all your neighbors. I mean, yeah. how does it know if your house is gutted or not? Right. All it does is say, ping, Jason, someone would like to talk to you about your home value. But a lot of times they go in there and put Joe Blow from Idaho, yeah. you know, in there as a name. Like, okay, God, I don't bite. You're going to get a free valuation. And if you don't want me to call you, tell me to go pound sand. Right. What's the big right. deal? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, yeah. geez. So, so that, anyway. that's on the bottom of the website? Yeah. Do I call you at two in the morning and like stalk you? I have your 
your cell phone number. He hasn't yet. Yeah, I'm not, not going to do that to a listener either. <laughs> so anyway, jasonbakerteam.com. If you want to call my cell phone, I give it out for... So here's my number. You don't want to give me yours, but here's mine. 406-552-4443. Jason at jasonbakerteam.com. Go to the bottom of the website there. Push some button and let's talk. Yeah. And as we said, he'll even answer if he's in the duck blind or not. <laughs> if you hear weird noises, wink, 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 wink. So anyway. All right, buddy. All right. Well, that's it. That's all we got time for today. If you missed any of this show or any of our previous shows, you know what to do. We post them all up in the on-demand category at NewstalkKGBO.com. So we got ourselves our own little podcast, you know? Yeah. NewstalkKGBO.com. If you missed any of Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker and Jason, until next week, we'll see you then. Yeah, buddy.